gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The of God does not come there. Back in the power of God. God along with you. you. The end of the, the world. Lord do not God. want our past. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You have led me through the fire and darkness nights. You are close. I know all I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I will sing of the goodness. Oh, 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 my love, you have been faithful. Oh, my love, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I will open our Bible then to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm also going to be reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Let Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you strategy to frustrate the advantage taker. Mighty God of heaven, I open this door of this room to you right now for the entire host of heaven to invade. I pray. Every word that comes from me this morning to this to your children and to me, let it take us to a lifelong destiny that no man can stop. Get us pregnant in the power of your word today. And let everyone who's standing here with one problem or the other, after this word, let those chains and problems disappear. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared strategy. To frustrate the advantage taker who is the devil himself. All right, now let's look at what recess advantage taking is about. Well, we all understand uh, the meaning of advantage and taking, but it's very good to be able to explain in the context of what we see in the book of. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So, advantage taking is exploiting. Exploiting. And manipulating. Everybody say manipulating. Manipulating. Manipulating individual using his or her discovered vulnerability or weakness to gain control of the individual for own gain. Look at that very well make a gain right that is a tendency of making a gain here on the substrate the vulnerable individual using the weakness of that individual and it does the process of exploiting and manipulating to be able to gain control and when the devil gains control the next level is to kill to and to destroy Devil does not spare anybody. Devil is very afraid of what you carry. Devil cannot kill a Christian. A Holy Ghost filled Christian cannot be killed by the devil. All right? It is impossible. Why? Because of the Holy Ghost in him. 
Any death that a Christian die, Holy Ghost feel Christian die, is because God took him away. So, in order for the devil to kill an individual, then we have to do all forms of exploitation, all forms of gimmicks to get that individual out of God's presence, to get that individual disconnected from the Holy Spirit, and then as a result, it will captivate such individual and it will go to the next level. It will steal all that he has and I will go ahead and destroy that individual. So mark the word there. Devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But remember, Jesus Christ has come to give every one of us life and that's what is proceeding today from this altar that we might receive the life of god by embracing this strategy where spread out in the scripture to be able to not to be ignorant of devil's devices hallelujah <clears throat> so to gain control of someone is to make someone do what one pleases at all what one pleases at will and in all in advantage taking the vulnerable may no longer be in control right advantage taking is the control of someone unaware okay the person is being controlled and he himself may not be aware and that control is done through a back door and the back door is simply the ignorance of the individual the bible says my people die because they lack knowledge what make them die they will kill them hallelujah because they lack knowledge they sublet themselves to the to the evil one and the evil one get rid of them okay praise the lord now what are the purposes of devil advantage taking all right number one to steal victim's belonging and make it ease, okay? And possibly present that belonging back to the victim as a gift. So devil has nothing in originally by itself. Everything God created can sometimes be duplicated by the devil. Hallelujah. We have seen, of course, cases where trees become demonized. And the tree is turning to a human being and walking around in the night in the streets. Those are all duplicates, all right? Duplicating humanity, making a picture of somebody. I would say the angels of uh, darkness sometimes appear as the angel of light. So the devil is capable of duplicating proper structure to make it look as if it is the original. So the devil has no originality in his creation. So God is not magical, but the devil is magical. When miracle is produced by God, that miracle is original. But when miracle is produced by the devil, we will see clearly that it is magical. It is temporary. Hallelujah. You will see that the purpose of the devil doing that is to get something in return. So devil's work is capable of duplicating what God originally created. So we cannot afford to be carried away with those gimmicks. Hallelujah. As I've read before, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Now I'm going to look at the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Devil is capable of laying hold on what does not belong to him. Let me tell you something. Jesus, God himself, in the book of Ezekiel, he said, all souls are mine. All souls are are mine devil does not create soul devil does not create human being but let me tell you something devil can decide to take hold of a soul of human being right he said what shall it profit a man that gain all this world loses his soul so it is possible to lose a soul to the devil amen through the gimmicks and tactics of the devil a soul of a human being can be sold to the devil for and will present that ownership to an individual and make it as if 
the individual no longer hold that soul again. Look at the example here that Jesus Christ was explaining. Luke chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. When an impure spirit comes of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. Verse 25. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. 26. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. Can you see that? And the final condition of that person is one worse than the first. Look at what is going on there. The devil take a possession, a lay hold on the soul of an individual because of ignorance. So the devil is capable in his tactics and gimmicks, in advantage taking. It's capable of taking hold of an individual. So it is possible to be demon possessed. It is possible to be a human being created by God, but yet still being oppressed, still being obsessed, still, still being possessed by the devil. This is simply because devil likes duplicate. Devil likes tampering with God's things. When God thinks are ignorant of what God is, so the devil will come over there and take over the ownership of what belongs to the individual. Hallelujah. Number two, what are the purposes of uh, devices, uh, the, the devil devices or the advantage taken of the devil? Number two, devil come to kill victim's dream, vision, goals, and destiny. Devil is a eater, is a killer, is a destroyer. Anything that has to do with a good vision, devil has a way of trying to tamper with such visions. All right? Praise the Lord. Book of John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the laws of your father ye will do. He, has, he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Hallelujah. So the devil has a way of coming to steal, to trick people, to lie, and to take advantage, and to take, take what's destiny and go and take it away. Hallelujah. Let me, I would say, when a man sleep, his any enemy comes and sow the tears among the wheat. What is the purpose of him doing that? The purpose of him doing that is to pollute the vision given to you by God. He wanted to, he wanted you to cast a doubt on what God has given you. So one time, any time, any day, God reveals things to you. Learn to write it down. He said. Write the vision down so that those that see it can run with it. It is very important in our life, whatever vision or dream God has given to us, we need to scribe it. We need to write it down somewhere and keep it. This is this life of, uh, of a social media and internet and all emails. We can always write important things and keep it in our folder, a special folder in our email. Right? Intact. Hallelujah. It's very important because the devil has a way of making us lose memory of what God has said. How? It can come in a dream and uh, do some stuff that's against the vision God has given to you. And if care is not taken, and you begin to ruminate on what the uh, distraction it brings to your life, before you know it, you begin to doubt God. And God cannot walk with doubt. Hallelujah. Say, the just shall live by faith. The just shall only live by his own faith. The just shall only live by his own faith. Not faith of another person. So if the just is doubtful, if the just person is not having faith, then a can kind of handicap God. Because we can only work with God with faith. So when the devil comes in dream, it brings bad dream to you. 
His intention is to distract you from the focus. And that's why I always tell you this. Good dream is very expensive. When you receive one, when you grab one, cherish it. Write it down. Reiterate it before God. Talk about it before God. Believe it. And walk with it. Because the devil is a killer. Is a stealer. Is a destroyer of visions. Hallelujah. Number three. What, what are the purposes of devil's advantage taking? Number three. To destroy everything left so that there will be no traces of evidence against the destroyer, the devil. Devil like to destroy things cleanly without any traces of evidence. John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. If anybody in life engage with you with a cause of conversation where there is no evidence, all right? Always avoid such fellow. Amen. Devil likes to trick people. Devil likes to manipulate people. Devil li likes to lie. Hallelujah. Number four. What are the purposes of devil advantage taking? To torment. Hallelujah. To torment. Matthew chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For, the, for he often falls into fire and often into water. Verse 16. So I brought him to your disciple, but they could not kill him. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. So, devil, what he does sometimes is to torment. These are one of his strategies. To torment people with what they have, what they own. To torment people in dream. To possess people and torment them. In fact, your devil can torment your expectation if your expectation is relying on men. Hallelujah. If, you're, if you trust man, Bible says, trust no man whose bread is in his nursery. We've seen people who remotely controlling people through their mind by sailing through their thoughts. Right? Sometimes your thought expression can be displayed in the way you talk. Your thoughts, I'm mean, talking about your thought here in your head, can be displayed in the way you behave. The thought process in your head sometimes can be displayed in the way we write. Our thought process in our head sometimes can be displayed in the way we have conversation. So when the devil sees that, he can use that to plan a strategy and to exaggerate things and lead us to expecting too much of a thing. That to the extent that we get disappointed and then on and on like that. That kind of mind control is called a torment. The money forces an agent of darkness, they always use it a lot. Mind control system. All you need to do is to study somebody very carefully and look at what he likes, what he's inclined to. Come with a formula that they can use to be able to get hold of the thought process of that person and make him to begin to do what a person is unwilling to do. That is a torment, a total gain of control. I pray to, for you today, whatever torment that is there will bring it around your system, making you to wake up and having a false hope today, I demolish it by the power of the anointing on this altar. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we are going to go into the strategies. What are the strategies to frustrate the advantage taking of Satan? Number one. Without any shame, listen carefully, without any shame or without any missing language and with humility and confidence on a clear term, communicate your identity with God Almighty. Via the channel of his word. Every place, 
everywhere at any time. I'm going to repeat that again. Without any shame, without any missing language, and with humility and confidence on a clear term, communicate your identity with God via the channel of His Word. Anywhere, any place, at any time. Let me let you know what Paul said about that. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. On that way around, he is not ashamed of what he's doing. He is not ashamed of his conversion process by God. He is not ashamed of Christ he met on the way to Damascus. He is not ashamed of the power of the Holy Ghost upon him. He is not ashamed of the body of the gospel preaching that God has given to him. And so he goes around as he's talking to people. He shares his testimony. He had a clear conversation, communication with everybody he meets. Today, some of us as young people, we go around after we leave church. Sometimes we kind of shine away from what God has made us to be. We are kind of afraid of expressing who God is in us. Now, guess what? The funniest thing is that devil himself understand and know who we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. I make it that clear to you. I'm going to tell you one particular Bible verse uh, in the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 40 to 41. Devil is very aware of who you are. Very, very aware. It's only playing game. But as a child of God, we need to identify who you are with the Lord and do that with all humility, all confidence, without missing language, making everybody around you know. Because if we play game with the devil, devil is going to use that to torment, to manipulate, and to destroy, and to steal. And they will be rendered as Christian that is not really a Christian. Have you ever seen somebody who is dying in Zion because of ignorance? My people die because they lack knowledge. Luke chapter 4, verse 40 to 41. Now, when the sun was setting, listen carefully, and they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. 41. And devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, re and he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that it was Christ. Ah, so if we are truly born again, the devil knows that we are truly born again. So if you go out there among in the public and behave as if you are not a Christian, you know what the devil does? Say, oh, really? This guy is kind of pretending who he is. Okay, I'm going to play the game with him too. Hallelujah. He has a way of the embarrassing. And making open show of us and disgracing us. He has a way of allowing the, the um, uh, forces of darkness to penetrate us just only because we pretended. Very important not to be attacked by the devil to put on an identity with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? By speaking about him, by talking about him, by connecting people to see Christ in us. He said, let your life be so shine among men. Ah, not among your brethren. Among all men. Everybody that come around you. Everyone that comes around you. That they may see your good works. And glorify. Listen. That they may see your good works. And glorify. Listen. That they may see your good works. Any good work hidden is no work. Devil has a way of repolishing or republishing your because we have failed to confess the good work of God in us. It will try to refurbish everything and make it appear it's not a reality. That's why we see Christians today who are suffering in silence. And they say, I have this whole thing, but I know it's not manifesting. But the thing is that I will really proud of the God's grace that we have. I will really proud of the content that Jesus has deposited in us. If you go around there and negotiate with the devil, the devil will make us look inferior. That's why we have inferiority complex kind of Christianity that is not even sure 
of who he is. Because why? Because they refuse. Because we refuse to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can also see, for example, in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 2 to 11. If I start from verse 6, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 7. Look at what Jesus responded. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, look at this issue here. The devil already know that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, the same way you, the devil already know that you are born again. <laughs> you are a child of God. He knows. He's not unaware. Guess what? But he came to play again with, with Jesus Christ. He wanted to see whether Jesus would disconfess that. See, it's, it's either way. Either way Jesus play. Uh, devil is going to find a trick to do some manipulation to get hold of Christ. Now look at what's happening here. Devil expect Christ to be agitated as here. That, that's true. I'm a son of God. That's true. Why not? I can, I can turn the son to the bread. Let me do that now so that you can know that really I'm a child of God. And the other way around too, if Christ refused to identify with God, refused to be confident and bold about who he is at the same time, they will also say that, ah, you are a child of God and are not confident. Then he will also attack him. You know what Jesus did? Look at his response. He responded. It is written. Amen. Learn how to identify your identity with God using God's word. Confidently. Without any fear of evil. He said to him, he said, it is written. Thou shalt what? Not tempt the Lord thy God. Look at it. Shall not tempt the Lord thy God. That means Jesus understand he is God in humanity. Ha. He let the devil know. Said devil, I'm aware that you know, but I want to emphasize without any fear of evil. I'm not afraid of repeating it again. That I am a God inside human, the Son of Man. Why could this why couldn't he say? Thou shalt not tempt Jesus Christ. <laughs> he didn't say that. Thou shalt not tempt me, Jesus Christ. He said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So, the identity there is God inside human. He referred devil to God. Very important in our life to refer whatever challenges. The enemy, whatever question the devil is asking. I refer him back to our creator. The one who gave us life in the first place. The one who made us to be born again. The one who is the real reason why we are here. It's very important. You don't present yourself as a proud kind of person to the devil, to attack the devil. The strategy is we are competent, we are humble, we are not afraid, we are not proud. We respond in our identity with God to the devil, to our attackers. Without any looking back using God's words. Hallelujah. Learn to express your identity wherever you go using the foundation of God's words. In the place of work is very important for people to know that you are a child of God. Very important by your expression. We cannot afford to be afraid. How can the light of God shine when we refuse to actually let people know that we are Christians? And that can be known also not only by confession, by the way we behave. Our behavior, the way we connect with people. And that connection, our conversation. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Those kind of attitude we put forward there can tell volume about whether we are truly Christian or not. Remember, they said the disciples who were seen in Antioch, they were first called Christians. Why? Because of their teaching. Their relationship, the impact they are making in the environment makes a difference. The people call them Christians. Hallelujah. Let our identity today, our identity today, in identifying with God, be the explanation to all men. 
who we are in Christ. That way, they will have no place to attack us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No pretense. No claiming who you are not. Let your yes be yes. Your no be no. Refuse to be who you are not. Don't let the devil torment you with what you claim you are not. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. For whoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. For he shall come in his own glory, and in his father's, and of the glory of angels. Hallelujah. So God is in support of whoever will not be ashamed of him. As Jesus was not ashamed of talking about the godness in him to the face of the devil. Hallelujah. Using God's word. Today learn on how to stand on your own, having God's backing, conversing with people around you who you are in Christ. No hiding of your identity. No, don't, do not allow what we are looking for regarding our career and success in life to redefine who we are. Who we are redefines what we are going to become. It's not the other way around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. He said, cast not away therefore your confidence which at recompense of reward. It's very important as a Christian. So many Christians, of Muslims, some of us are not confident enough of what we carry. We are not confident of the Holy Ghost that is in us. We are not confident of sharing what we have that God has given to us. How can God make himself manifest through us? If you are not confident of what God has given to us. Remember, the disciples went in a corner and they cried upon the Lord. Even after they have received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts of the Apostles. They said, grant thy servant boldness to speak thy word. Hallelujah. Very important to cry to God, to speak to God about this confidence. To express yourself. To stand without being shamefaced. Hallelujah. Without being afraid of anybody. To declare the truth of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Number two. What are the strategies to frustrate the advantage taken of Satan? Mean what you say, say what you mean. No lying or exaggerating. Avoid foolish conversations. This, all these things put devil off. Hallelujah. It get devil afraid. See? It doesn't matter. God has created you to, uh, with a personality. You know, you know, they, so there's one person who wrote, wrote a book and called them names. Well, I don't want to call them by those names. I just know that we are all divers. Even culture, we're divers. The thinking process, we're divers. In a home, you can have children over there. All the children might be different from one another because of diversity. So we all think differently. That's what represents the uniqueness of creation of God. So we are all different. And the person was calling this a choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, and melancholy. <laughs> All right, whatever category you think uh, you belong, or we belong, or we, we combine, this is very important not to, not to have a negotiation with Satan. Amen. Not to have one kind of foolish conversation with the devil, because we have no business with Satan. We only have business with God. So God can appoint somebody and heavily load them, even though despite being choleric, being very high-powered, aggr aggressive. And then God used that aggression to preach the gospel. Positive way. So it's not you to start debating that and looking at who you are and begin to say, oh, because I'm a bit aggressive. I don't think I'm really, really genuine Christian. I'm not getting that yet. That's not true. Amen. God uses every person differently and with different temperament. We have heard of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, a very short man, uh, we told in the scripture that he has no wife, that the world will find the scripture. We saw his passion to his minister. I would say he's a fully melancholy with some combination of choleric. Very detailed person. 
is able to speak the gospel unstoppably. Maybe that's your portion. This is not your duty to start relegating yourself by telling the devil you are not up to. No manipulation. Don't exaggerate. No need to say, oh, well, I have a spirit of pastor. But what is in you? A spirit of evangelist. So no need to start giving divination all around and exaggerating in ministry. There's no need to start giving people what they want to hear about you. It's very important to be real. Everybody say to be real. Be real. Yes, your yes be yes. Let be our honest. no be no. When our yes is yes, our no be no, they will get afraid of us. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know for sure we are men of the truth. So you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So when we are men of truth, it make the devil to lose his hold upon us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, for whatsoever is more than this is from the devil. Amen. So when, when yes is not yes, no is not no, it's definitely from Satan. Hallelujah. So when we become a man who lie, who exaggerate, you know what we are doing? We are invoking the attack of the devil. We are telling the devil, devil, I have your property in me. Devil, I have your possession. Your possession in my life. And so they will come confidently and come and lay hold on his possession. And the possession of that devil in that case is a spirit of life. And they will come over and begin to attack. So when your yes is yes, no matter what happens in the environment, people will lie around you, even in place of businesses. But learn to stay faithful to God. Learn to stay not lying. Stay committed to what God has said. And you will see the devil having no God to confront you. Let me tell you something. Temporarily, initially, it might appear that truth does not prevail. But the Bible says righteousness is not a nation. So a matter of time, that truth that you're saying is going to be the gatekeeper, the door opener for your future career, for your future success. Do not manipulate. That's not going to work. That's only going to attract the devil to start attacking. Hallelujah. When your yes is yes, you know it's no. Devil is very afraid of you. Hallelujah. John chapter 8 verse 44. John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father as ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth. You see that? It's not a true speaker. Because there is no truth in him. Amen. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. The lie belongs to the devil. Devil lay ownership on lie. Hallelujah. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. So when yes is not yes, what happens is that devil will see his own possession in the life of that individual and he will come after the person. No matter who is your boss, doesn't matter. Say what is the truth. Say, don't manipulate. Don't go around gossiping and doing all stuff. You put a show before people and in the back, you do a stomach. You are already pretending and you are opening the door for the devil to attack. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. Never bargain with devil or engage him in conversation. Never negotiate your right with Satan. We saw that example with Eve uh, having a conversation with the devil after God created Adam and Eve. The devil asked a question. He said, ah, Has God not said you should not eat of that, that food? And Eve went ahead and began to have conversation until the devil was able to counter and say, Well, you will not die. <laughs> if you eat of the fruit, you will not die at all. Because God, God knows that if you eat of the fruit, you are going to live forever. That's why he's telling you not to eat it. And, and Eve saw a reason in that. You know what she did? She just accepted that. And that was the reason why we had what we are today. Because of the disobedience of Eve. So it's very important that conversation we have with Satan, conversation we have with friends that are not really fear God. Those ones who are manipulators come around us and have conversation with us and distract us. Very important to have a self-identity whereby we do not engage those conversations to tamper with our focus. Very important because devil can use any individual. In fact, the devil can use your head actually 
to minister to your, to your spirit. They can use your flesh. You have to learn how to take God's word and hold it tight. No bargaining with them. No discussion. Amen. You don't engage them with discussion. People, people are casting down demons. And we do engage. What's your name? What's that? What's this? What's that? There's no time for that. You just say in the name of Jesus. You, know, you demon leave. That's it. It's not your job. It's the job of God. Don't have conversation with the devil. You put people on the road. Kill. You begin to have questions. You spend three hours, four hours casting down demon. That's not the way it works. Hallelujah. You're going to say the truth. Whatever is in you, whatever God has put in you will be in operation. Just be simple and do the work of ministry without doing all this stuff of exaggerating, manipulating, and having entertainment with the devil in the name of I'm preaching the gospel. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. Now, finally, I'm going to emphasize this. Do not build ministry. On deliverance amen one of the way to conquer devil <laughs> in the household of faith among god's people is to do a total resistance by refusing to build your ministry on deliverances hallelujah there's no ministry of deliverance in the scripture hallelujah we know that when christ was moving around the old place people are coming who are demon possessed and lay hands on them and they are getting deliverance amen it did not was not going around going around and be talking about deliverance he did not devote uh, the entire message on deliverance <laughs> he did not devote prayer meeting on, on deliverance hallelujah he devoted time in people being conscious of the kingdom of god amen and in the process of delivery of the of the attributes of the kingdom anyone who come attacked he lay hand on them and they get deliverance those are all by the way amen they are just additional support for the ministry they are not the major focus the major focus of the ministry, the greatest miracle, is the miracle of God's presence in an individual. God taking hold of his soul and converting that and becoming part of the kingdom. That's how we should build our ministry. A ministry full of God's word. Hallelujah. Do not build your ministry on deliverance. Hallelujah. Um, let me say one more, one more thing. You just submit to the Holy Spirit and resist the devil. Amen. How do you receive the devil? Simply by praying. Amen. Everybody say by praying. I pray. Learn on how to pray your freedom. Amen. You don't in a, in a prayer. You're not trying to pray and make God feel as if he's not with you. You are praying to establish God's presence. To make God feel that he, you are dependent on him. To make God feel that he's with you. When God sees you talking to him that way, he fan into action. See, there is no demon. That can hold anybody ransom in God's presence. It's impossible. When the presence of God was commanded, when Solomon was praying in the temple, the old priest fell down. Nobody could withstood. Ordinary people were falling down. How much less demon? Hallelujah. How much what? Less demon. When demon hear God's presence, when they see God's presence, they don't have any choice. But they will fall down. But it's very important to be conscious. Of, of all these things very important as an individual to know who we are in christ because the knowledge of who we are will take us to where we are going rise up on your feet this morning and begin to declare father in heaven today i take my consciousness i take my realization that i am greater than the conqueror amen i am greater than devil and his agent i am greater than the manipulator i'm greater than the killer i'm greater than the sinner father help me lord to stand in resistance against every tactic and practice of the devil today i refuse every manipulation that is ever bringing around to swindle me to take me away from the direction you have given to me to manipulate the vision you have given to me to manipulate the dream i resist every attack of the devil to take me from where you put me in the precious name of jesus christ today i accept to take my identity with you i accept to take my identity with you the confidence to speak who you are the confidence to talk about christ the confidence to defeat the attributes of God. Let it come. Let it come. 
Let me not die in silence. Today I open my heart up. I open my mouth up to identify with you. No more falling down. No more being ashamed of the gospel. No more being ashamed of talking about Jesus anywhere. No more being ashamed of carrying you around. Oh Lord, today I accept my identity with you. Today, I accept my total testimony with you to speak to all men. Thank you, Father. No more bargaining with the devil. No more conversation with Satan. In Jesus' name, we have declared. And so, mighty God, today, your word has been released. Let this world distribute itself. Let this world begin to readdress the spiritual growth of your children. As they live here today, virtues that have never happened before to them, let it begin to follow them. I pray that virtue will be revealed to whatever they do. These ones are ready. Lord God Almighty, use these bodies, use this soul to redistribute yourself in the community, in the whole world. Let all this one be activated. Father, to be an ultimate revelation of the kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, with all the clear.